Tom, as you can hear, is unfamiliar with speaking in public. Right. Uh, he has a tie on here, just to give you an idea of the change that we're talking about. He has a tie on here, and it has fish all swimming in one direction. Fish, 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 fish. And I didn't catch it at first. He says, look closely. Down here, there's a fish swimming in that direction with a cross on it. I don't need to explain the symbolism, but uh, well put. Tom, uh, we're talking about change. And I know some changes took place in your life over the years. Amen. Were you born in a Christian home with uh, people teaching you Christian ideals and all this thing from the moment you came into the world? Mm, no. Tell us about it. My parents were Italian uh, from Italy, yeah. so I had no choice. I was raised as a Catholic. So I um, got baptized as a baby, they told me. I had no choice in that either. With the you know, First Communion and Catechism taught on Sundays and had all the nuns teaching and I was a Catholic, did all the stuff they did. And that's, that's all I knew. Um, then it was like, uh, uh, part, I got married. 22 years old, 21 years old, found a nice lady, me, I had a well. And the sad part was uh, about two years later I got divorced. And already eyes were still wandering and uh, here I am committing adultery already. Well, knowing the Catholic religion as I did and all the rules and regulation, I am now excommunicated from the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. So I can't get communion because the priest can't save me anymore, so I stopped going. Right. Now, fast forward with that, uh, you talk about change. What I guess, was uh, it? What was it, Tom? Yeah. What, uh, was, it? what was the aha uh -huh <laughs> moment that came into your life? All right, the aha uh -huh moment. Let's go fast forward then. Uh, I saw a blonde. <laughs> I'm now uh, married three times, living with somebody else, I'm a nice redhead, and I see a blonde. Mm -hmm. Something about her that I wanted to get involved with. And when I first met her, I went to ask her out. She said, uh, we sat down for a cup of coffee. She said, by the way, I'm a born-again Christian. And he went, no, 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 I feel one of those people. But there was something about her. So I uh, kept on trying, and she finally said, okay, her friend was going to have a church service this first time. Uh, I could go with her then if, she, if I'd like to do that. I said, well, it was a date. That was pretty cool. Well, I was at 98th Street, like in Shea Boulevard in Scottsdale, and she lived South Phoenix, and this was 103rd Avenue. It's on the west side, and there was no 101 yet. This was uh, 1994. So I picked her up, took her there, and I get there, and it's a high school. And we're inside, there's a gym. And I go, what kind of church is this? I said, what's going through my head? I mean, churches have to have spires, they got statues, and nothing like that. It's a basketball court. And all they had was about 10 to 12 chairs, and some man had a guitar, he spoke, said something. And at the end, he said, if anyone here would like to have their sins forgiven for how their lifestyle was, to please stand up, accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, and repent of their sins. Well, when I heard that, I mean, I knew Jesus. He was on the cross. I saw him every Sunday, but it didn't do anything. I started to stand up, and the irony of it, this lady grabbed my jacket, and she pulled me back down. And I get a kick out of it when I tell that story because most people have their mouths go open and go, why did she do that? Well, the reason she did that is she wanted to make sure that it was for me and not just to get her. Because she'd been around as well. I'm like 47 years old now. So all right, I said, no, I have to stand up. So I did stand up and that day my life changed. It went upside down. See, I lost everything I had. What were you doing at the time? What was that? What were you doing at the time? Well, I was very successful. I had an insurance agency. I'm an insurance, uh, called the word salesman, insurance salesman for years. About seven, eight guys working for me, so I had it really easy. Um, a lot of free time, did a lot of trips, and uh, it was amazing. Uh, <laughs> my sister, uh, we'll go back to the Catholic family now, uh, 16 years older than me, I was the mistake. They had four, one, two, three, four, and then 12 years later I came along. My father was 50 when he had me. So anyhow, um, I idolized my sister, and I went to her, and I said, Hey, Mary, the other day I became a born-again Christian, and I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. And she took three steps backwards. That wasn't too exciting. I went to a friend of mine that I belonged to a tennis tournament in a tennis club. We played a lot of tennis together. I met him. He was from Chicago, Italian. I know him for quite a while, and now I'm this born-again Christian, and they're told i got to go share your testimony. So I go to him and say, Bob, the other day, and I said the exact same thing. And his response was, oh, so now you think you're better than me? And it was, no, this is about me, not you. Well, if you want to continue playing tennis with me, yeah, I want to hear that stuff out of your mouth. Well, okay, you know, that's what I have to do. 
And then my business disappeared. About six to eight months later, each salesperson I had started out on their own. So I got a 2,000 square foot office, two full-time secretaries, and nobody working for me. That wasn't too good. So I guess I bring that up because I think of the, the message sometimes that says you have to have Jesus, you tell people that because Jesus is going to give you all this stuff. Well, I think if I came to the Lord because of all the good stuff I was going to get, I probably would have turned around and went back to my own form of life, but that was a lot better. This was not what I thought it was going to be like. But I understood one thing, that I was thankful that the Lord called me. I mean, just that, that, that blew me away to open my eyes, a scumbag like me. I mean, married three times, and what, what, what kind of a testimony is that? I don't have a good life. I'm a horrible person in the eyes of the Lord. I've lied, I've stolen, I mean, lusted, I, I, I committed adultery. And the worst one was, my poor wife, I finally get married, by the way, that was awesome. The Lord wrote me a Catherine. And uh, here I am looking at pornography. This is probably three years, four years into my uh, walk, and realizing all of a sudden, I mean, all of a sudden, this is wrong. This is a sin. I shouldn't be doing this. This is having an adulterous affair with my own wife. So what I've learned is that we have to ask God for forgiveness. He said he'll forgive us. It says so in John. But we also have to go to that person that we're offended. So I asked God, please take this away from me. And then I called Catherine into the room on the watch the computer so she could see what I was looking at. At that point, I had to revive her because she fainted. No, no, I'm only kidding. <laughs> and she was in, really in shock. Here's this guy that she thought was this godly man looking at pornography. And I asked her to forgive me for what I was doing. And would she pray that God would take that away and not only that, but have God help me hate the sin as much as he does. And that prayer was answered. I don't have a challenge that anymore. It's wonderful. So those are some of the things that I've seen in the walk of my life. That it's, it comes from the Holy Spirit. That, that, that we, I've got some scripture and I don't want to go get too involved in that. But that's the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, it, it, it's not going to happen. It, it, just, it just can't. Man on his own cannot come to God. God has to call him. He draws us in. And many times he uses different little things to get your attention. I pray all of you, each one of you, any of you, open your eyes to that fact. And really accept the fact that you're not as good as you think you are. Because you see, all those times I was married, all those times, and the adults was affair, guess what? I thought I was a good person. I had a great job. I took care of people. I bought lunches. You know, I was a great guy. Maybe in the world's point of view, but not in God's point of view. So I want to finish up with this, then Heather just say, and I want to keep it short. This, this is what came to me about a year and a half ago, and the Lord has put this on my, on my heart. And it had to do with, as you just said, change. Mm -hmm. I sat there one day and said, well then, who am I? If, if, if I'm a new creation, as it says so in Corinthians, so I did that. the old is gone, the new has come, then who am I? And so I literally wrote a song. And I'd like to share that with you. I'm not going to, by the way, I'm not going to clear the room by singing it. So I'll just read it to you. And if you have pencils and paper in hand, I would love to have you guys write down the verses that I have in these songs. So then you can go look them up and see how it might affect your life and how it would apply in your own life. So here we go. It says, who am I if I'm not me? Well, as John 3, 3, Jesus tells me, being born again is what I need to be. I thank God as I tell everyone I see. I'm like that, but Psalm 19, 7 converted me. The laws I broke so many times, Jesus paid my debt by paying my fine. In Mark 16, 15, he commands me to go, so I can tell the world before I go. I share with all I meet with intent, so they know they need to repent. In Acts 1, 8, Jesus ascends on high, and all my sins he took, and that's when he said, bye. I know he wanted to give me a lift. He'd give me the Holy Spirit, and that was my gift. In Galatians 3.24, Paul reminds us why the law. This teacher, tutor, schoolmaster shows me all. Unless I admit my sins to all, it would not please him at all. Unless I repent and trust in him, my life could not be one who could follow him. Ephesians 2.8.9 states, it's his grace is what I needed, because without it I couldn't have succeeded. So to show my love for him in John 14.15 as he requires, I now do as he commands because it's my desire. And in Ephesians 1, Paul, Paul tells me, I'm an adopted child, and it's the kingdom of heaven, where forever I will be. So, if you'd like to know if you've been adopted into the kingdom, I'll have another little phrase for you. It's as easy as one, two, three. Go to 1 John, chapter two, verse three. And of course, read the rest. So, Lastly, I want to thank 
Well, Captain, I really want to thank all of you. And I say all of you, all the people here at the Cassius Christian Fellowship. Um, the, the welcoming that we've received has been amazing. Um, that you have reached out to us. I mean, we've only been here six weeks. We came here at the end of January. And um, it's like being home. So if any of you here are looking for a place, some place that you feel is home, a place you need for refuge or for encouragement, you found it. This is it right here. So I want to thank you personally. I really do. This has been a blessing. You have been to me. I really appreciate it. Now I do have one more comment. I'm done. I have a little uh, thing I made up. It's called My Story. So it's a very short, brief testimony. And it's written out. It's on the back. It looks like this called My Story. And I was told a long time ago, you should be able to write your testimony out and make it very short, like on the size of a napkin. So here it is. It's on the back. I've been taken. I will stay after the service. If anybody has any questions, you want to ask anything, I'll be here for you. Thank you very much for listening.